Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. Belmont Hill is a small private school outside of Boston. It's not famous for its athletics. The school's mascot isn't even an animal. It's an 18th century navigational tool. The Belmont Hill Sextants. Doesn't even make sense. So when it comes to sports, Belmont Hill is not trying very hard. But the school's athletic program can claim at least one important footnote to history. In 1975, its football roster contained two names that you will recognize even now, Mark Milley and Richard Levine. Milley is now the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Levine, of course, is our country's most famous admiral. Both transitioned late in life into overweight middle-aged women. Both wound up working as high-level officials in the Joe Biden administration. Their teammates at the all-boys school in Boston probably wouldn't have predicted any of that. Here's what Rick Levine looks like now from a video he just posted on Instagram. Hello, my name is Admiral Rachel Levine, and I have the honor of being the Assistant Secretary for Health at the United States Department of Health and Human Services. Happy Pride. Happy Pride Month. And actually, let's declare it a summer of pride. Happy Summer of Pride. Happy Summer of Pride! Rick Levine is so darn proud, he'd like to tell you about it all summer and possibly into the fall. He's got a lot to be proud of. What specifically, you ask? Well, strangely, he doesn't say, nor does he mention his former wife or children. He doesn't tell us whether they're proud too. Since none of them have been invited onto the Today Show to talk about their feelings, we're gonna have to guess. For now, we're gonna assume that his former family is proud, and why wouldn't they be? Few Americans in our history has come as far as Rick Levine. Here's a fat guy in a Halloween costume who somehow became a federal health minister. Not a small thing, you try that. Not too long ago, this same man was a married pediatrician with kids lecturing about eating disorders at Penn State. Now he's emerged as a path-breaking lady admiral with medals on his chest. And he did all of that without winning a single naval battle or even being female. It's pretty inspiring. What we have here is living proof that in this country, you really can be whatever you want to be. If Rick Levine can become Admiral Rachel, why can't you be Napoleon or Lord Mountbatten, the last Viceroy of India? Ever see that guy's uniform? Or why not Shaka, the legendary Zulu war chief? You could bring your assegai and leopard hide shield to work at Deloitte and no one would be allowed to say a word about it. The HR department would have your back. Unfortunately, you can't actually do any of that. The point of Rick Levine's amazing transformation is not to free you from the inflexible husk that you were born in so that you can be more fully yourself, whatever you decide that is. No, that's not the point. Rick Levine's personal journey has nothing to do with you. It's about him, it's his journey. Your fantasies about becoming something totally new and different have not been approved yet. In fact, they're weird. Shaka, the Zulu war king, come on, that's racist. Shut up and be proud of Admiral Rachel. I, Rachel L. Levine. She's the one who was smashed glass ceilings. You just got some kind of weird fetish. So actually, now that we're saying this out loud, it's pretty clear that Rick Levine has no interest in liberating you from anything. This is not about liberation. It's just the opposite. It's just another religious war, same as all the others. The people who think they're God versus everybody else. In primitive civilizations, which would include every civilization since the beginning of time until ours, people assumed there were rules, rules that no human being made, but that people could ignore only at their peril, at great risk. Some called these rules nature or natural law, or even as societies advanced, theology. But most of the time, people didn't call them anything. They didn't have to. There wasn't a debate about whether the rules were real. People assumed there were consequences to pretending that you were God. They thought Sodom and Gomorrah were real places. They were destroyed for disobedience. They imagined the same thing could happen to them. Not anymore. Rick Levine doesn't worry about being punished by forces he can't see. He knows he's in charge. He makes the rules. He sets the limits. Reality is what he says it is. That's his view, and he shares it with virtually everybody else in a position of authority in the United States. That's a pretty bold bet, really. For seven million years, human beings have believed one thing, presumably based on some evidence. Around 2015, they became convinced of something completely different. Are they right? It feels like we're gonna find out soon.